Oh wow, is that Josh from Ultimate Josh? Wow, it is him. I'm back again to review two more movies. Two movies. I reviewed three last whenever it was, and now I'm reviewing two. The movies I'm going to be reviewing are Deadpool and La La Land, and then I'm going to be reviewing another movie, just one movie, probably like next week or two weeks from now, because I love this so much, and I think it deserved it, oh, its own review. Okay, let's get right into it. I'm a little sick today, so that's why my voice might sound a little weird, and I'm just talking weirdly too, but um, yeah, so we're just going to get into it with Ralph's Reviews reviews yay shaping up to be pretty odd the first review that we're going to be reviewing in this review is deadpool x go give it to you wait for you to get it on your own x go deliver to you knock knock open up the door deadpool this is a movie for the fans and i'm a fan Believe it or not, I'm kind of a comic book nerd, and I'd actually read some Deadpool before the movie came out. I'd even read some Deadpool before the test footage came out. Ah, me llamo Pesina de la Muerta. There's no easy way to say this. I'm pregnant, Trevor. And when the test footage had come out, me and my friend Carter, he was in that Canadian video that I did a little while back. We went crazy. We watched that, the test footage that, you know, was leaked. Uh, we watched that over and over again. It was amazing. We loved it. But then when Deadpool was supposed to be rated R, we were really sad. Because at the time, we hadn't really seen a lot of R-rated movies. But then when it came out, we were like, oh yeah, we've seen we've seen tons. On to the, onto the review. That's, I'm just saying, I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for this uh, movie. Alright. I think that Deadpool, like I said, is a very fan-oriented character. And that works for this film. People are just excited that the movie was made at all, and that it's actually good, but they just don't know how good it actually is, and I'm going to tell you. So starting off, the movie is very self-aware, and I think it works really well for this movie because it feels like Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds is just a friend watching the movie with you instead of being a character on the screen, and it, it makes it a lot funnier. I like when they take shots of the X-Men and Fox, 20th Century Fox, and the corporation behind the movie, so it, it doesn't take itself too seriously, and I think the opening credits really embodies that. They reference so many pop culture and comic book things that if you're a fan, or at least follow any media, you understand a few of those things, and it's, it's funny. So let's talk about the story. Basically, Deadpool has to get back his fiance from a generic British supervillain. Yeah, so the plot's kind of weak, but what it does do well is develop the relationship between Deadpool and and his fiance. And as messed up as each of them are, you still want them to get back together and be together at the end of the movie. Okay, Deadpool is a very funny character and I think Ryan Reynolds plays him perfectly. Not only is Reynolds a funny guy, but he's also a good actor, I think. He hasn't really been in any crazy blockbusters except the one that will not be named Green Lantern. And he hasn't really been in any award-winning movies either, just kind of dumb comedies and bad action movies. But he really shined in this movie and hopefully will get more roles in the future because of this. And when I say he shined, he really shined. The movie is very casual, which leaves lots of opportunities for good jokes, and he really delivers. Also, the fight scenes are actually really good. Like, the one on the bridge is hilarious and also really cool. And uh, the final fight scene is just amazing. I think both are some of the best comic book action scenes this year. Okay, last point about things that I like is that this movie flows really well, with each scene connects with the last one but still moves the story along. Along with the callbacks to previous jokes, you're never bored and you always know what's going on. Okay, on to the stuff that I don't like. I really did like this movie, but a lot of the jokes were really random and out of the blue, like when ever TJ Miller co would compare stuff to other stuff, it always felt a little forced and took you out of the moment. It felt like those movies with Will Ferrell and Steve Carell, like Anchorman, where they just improv, which is okay in those movies, but in this, it, I just, I didn't really like it. It kind of bugged me. You are haunting. You look like an avocado had sex with an older avocado. Thank you. Another minor problem I had is that I don't think they took it far enough. I think there could have been more action and more, like, gore. I guess not really gore, but just bigger, better action, and I think most of the jokes could have been taken to another level, more offensive level. I guess this they were just trying out this concept, so for now it's okay, but I think uh, the next movie has to be even better, or else a lot of people will lose a lot of faith in Deadpool, including myself. 
the fan. I really enjoyed Deadpool, and I think uh, it was the best comic book movie of the year. Don't hurt me. The torture scene made my stomach turn, and I think the fourth wall breaking action comedy, uh, the dark villain and origin story really tie the movie down, which was a good thing. There are only a few small problems that are easily solved, but they do need to be solved by the next movie. Uh, but for the, this movie, it was everything it needed to be, and I loved it, as the fan. 7 out of 10. So, do you like jazz? No, this movie does not deserve 14 Oscars, but I understand why it was nominated for that many. It is very original for today's age. 80 years ago, musicals were the norm for film and television, but now, that's not really common. But it, this movie feels kind of like a tribute to those sort of musical films from the 20s with Frank Sinatra and Leia's mom. Rest in peace. So, the things that I love about this movie. One is the seamless musical numbers. Not only are they choreographed beautifully, but when it goes from a scene to a musical number, it happens seamlessly, like I said. The scene at the pool that, that leads to Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone's tap dance battle by the look off. We're Perfectly and shows how alike they are through song and dance and not through dialogue like what most movies do. What I meant by seamless is that when there's a song and dance number, the movie doesn't stop telling the story and cut to the song. It still tells the story and progresses the story as the song is being sung. And I think that's great, it tells the story further while still providing that song and musical number. Like I said, the musical numbers are choreographed perfectly. The opening number had like a hundred extras all dancing on cars and stuff, and it was awesome. It was, And it, they were all interacting with each other, and it's it just amazing. Like the time, and effort, and amount of care that was put into this movie is insane. And that brings me to my next point. Two, this is a passion project. You can tell that the subject matter is all things that the director and writer, Damien... Damien Chazelle cares deeply about, because everything is so in-depth. Like Ryan Gosling's love of jazz. Obviously, Damien loved jazz, because of how real it feels when they show anything related to jazz. And Emma Stone's whole experience in Hollywood feels like it has come from personal experience. And let's talk about the cinematography and direction. The number with Emma Stone's friends and her was really cool. When they all, when they went through the apartment, it, it just looked really good, and that's how most of this film looks. You wanna go, if you're the someone ready to be friends. Stylistically, it was beautiful. The movie is set in our time, but it looks like it is set in the 20s, and I love it. I think it really works with the old-time Hollywood feel. The whole jazz storyline also fits with that. Okay, I still have more to praise before I talk about some other parts of this movie. Okay, the music. Jazz and singing numbers included, it had its own storyline that changed throughout the movie as the characters did. And I loved how the music affected all these characters throughout the movie. Minor spoiler here. When Emma Stone goes to her audition and sings that song for the audition, it should be super happy that she even got the audition. But the music isn't. It's sad, almost foreshadowing what's going to happen to between her and Ryan. And the other song that's played a few times in this movie that holds so much weight is a song that Ryan Gosling um, plays at the restaurant, and then in her flashback, and then at the end of the movie. I just heard you play, and I want to- That song means so much. When he plays it at the end, she's not with him. It's just so heartbreaking. <laughs> And my last point about how great this movie is, is about Ryan Gosling, and how great he was in this movie. Great, great, great. Honestly, he killed the role. Batman's brother is going to have a tough time at the Oscars with this guy in the mix. He was so good at everything he did, and it, it felt so believable. I rooted for him the whole time. And part of that is definitely the writing, but I mean, he really pulled off the role better than I think anyone else could. Ryan showed off his versatility in Nice Guys, and in this movie, he really blossomed. And as someone I respect as an actor, I hope this is the beginning of him getting a bunch of new rules that he deserves to get. Okay, on to things that I didn't like as much as some of the other things. Ryan Gosling's counterpart, Emma Stone, 
she was good in this movie for the most part, but at the beginning, I didn't really like her, and I found her a little off-putting. Um, she didn't really give you any emotion. When she went through hardships, I didn't really care, because I didn't really connect with her on an emotional level. This was at the start. As it went on, I really enjoyed her performance, and I think it was one of the best in her career. But at the start, it wasn't that caliber. I just found her a little annoying. Another complaint I have is that it's boring at points in this movie. For the most part, I was intrigued, but there were points where I just kind of blacked out. And, and I know that the La La Legion, as I am referring to them as, would kill me and make it look like an accident. But that's just my opinion. Another opinion that I have, whether it be popular or not, is that I didn't like the ending. I understood it, and it got the reaction out of me that it was trying to, but I still didn't like it. Spoilers for this movie in 3, 2, 1. The whole movie was building up to the main characters being together and living their dreams out, and, and you know what? The ending was really smart. Basically, I saw it like this. They chose to live their dreams over being together, and they made the decision together, and I respected it, but it made me sad, and it made the rest of the movie, the beginning, feel anticlimactic, and it, it felt like it didn't mean anything. It's not a feeling I like. For the most part, those were my only complaints for the movie, other than a small complaint about the lack of plot and just more going for style. Um, it felt like the movie was about developing the main character's relationship and not about moving the story forward. So that bugged me a little bit because of how little plot there actually was, but I think it was worth it because of the chemistry that formed between the two main characters. So, you know, 50-50, six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Analogies. All in all, this is a great movie. It deserves a lot of the praise it got, but in my humble opinion, not all of it deserved that praise. Ryan Gosling was amazing, and he and Emma Stone had great chemistry that carried the movie. Although the movie is not flawless, it is very emotional, and you can tell the people behind the scenes are just as passionate about the movie and content as the crazy fan base. Oh, and all the people hating on the movie because jazz was told without black people or whatever are just wrong. And one of the reasons for this is because it to it was told through the eyes of Ryan Gosling. <sighs> I'm going to rate this movie 7.5 out of 10. So, those are the two movies that I reviewed. Did you like them? Did you not? I don't really care. So I rate them 7 and 7.5 out of 10 for each. Both ahead of uh, Hardcore Henry and Tickled and Space Cop, of course. As you can see in this visual, that's hopefully right there. I'm not sure if it will be, but hopefully. So I, I really enjoyed making this video, as you can tell. Uh, leave a like if you liked it. If you didn't, then, yep, goodbye. Remember to subscribe, because this video is probably going to be pretty long. So if you liked it then and made it this far, then that means you liked the video. I said this last time. New videos coming out. I'm excited for my next lineup of videos. I've got about three or four that I'm working on right now. So I'll get excited for those. All right, JC Inc. signing off. I just heard you play, and I wanted. To